Hi everybody and welcome back to The Ultimate Fashion History with me, Amanda Halle, and my capsule review and costume analysis of Paolo Lorenz's new movie that opened last night, Spencer, starring Kristen Stewart as a troubled Diana. I'm going to start with my costume analysis and then move on to my capsule review and thoughts about the movie as a whole. It's set over Christmas in 1991, the last Christmas that Charles and Diana spent as a couple before they separated in 1992. And the movie uses the idea of Diana's entrapment at Sandringham over the holidays as a metaphor for her feelings of imprisonment in her life. This is not early Diana, Lady Diana, but if you want to hear about her wardrobe when the world first glimpsed this future princess, Check out an episode in my 20th Century Style Icon series here on the UFH, where I wax lyrical about Diana's original Sloan Ranger style. I'll leave a link. The movie opened last night, which means a lot of people will see it this weekend. So we can be sure that in the coming week, there will be an awful lot of talk on the internet about the wardrobe in the movie, including all that stuff and nonsense about quote, historical accuracy, unquote, and, ooh, fact-checking Diana's real wardrobe against the costumes in the movie. Already, when the trailer came out, some people were getting their knickers in a twist over this particular outfit, saying, the movie's set in 1991. Diana didn't wear stuff like this in 1991. This outfit is from the 80s. They got it wrong. Um, no, they didn't get it wrong. But yes, this outfit certainly evokes the sort of public appearance get-up Diana wore in the early to mid-1980s. But in the movie, it's worn in a series of somewhat surreal flashbacks, where Diana traces the trajectory of her life and how she went from a happy and hopeful young girl to the most famous woman on the planet, one that was beloved by the masses, adored by her children, but, as this movie suggests, Suggests, reviled by those who should have loved and protected her the most, her husband and his family. So no, they didn't get it wrong. Although I actually read somewhere on the internet when the trailer came out that they got it wrong because Diana never wore an outfit like this in yellow. She wore an outfit like this in red. They got it wrong. You know, sometimes I think that people have forgotten what a costume designer actually is. The clue is in the title. They are called costume designers, not clothing replicators. And the costume designer for Spencer was cleverly quick to remind the world of this. As if she needed to, for the costume designer for Spencer is none other than two-time Oscar winner Jacqueline Duran, arguably my favourite contemporary costume designer, not least of all because she created uh, one of my all-time favourite movie gowns of the past 20 years or so. Jacqueline herself says that not a piece of costume for Kristen Stewart was an exact replica of anything Diana wore, but that she wanted to, quote, give the aura of Diana in this era, which she absolutely did. Yet some of the wardrobe was created with a definite nod to some of Diana's signature looks like this red turtleneck with slim houndstooth skirt and black patent belt. And her bomber jacket school run look here. Most of the costume was created from scratch, but some pieces were sourced, including this jacket from the same label as Diana's. But Duran says this was just a piece of incredible luck, as she absolutely did not set out to duplicate Diana's real wardrobe, but instead to suggest it. And she nailed it, which means we get a lot of brass button blazers and baseball caps and the huge sunglasses that marked Diana's off-duty look of the early 90s. A lot of this stuff, of course, could have been sourced as vintage, but Jacqueline Duran designed and created most of it to modify the silhouette slightly, as in 1991, the fashion silhouette was still quite oversized and structured, which I think on screen would have read far too much as the 80s than the early 90s. I think also Jacqueline Duran preferred to design and create the wardrobe rather than simply source it to accentuate Kristen Stewart's height 
Christian Stewart is five foot four, same as me, whereas Diana was over five foot eight. And because Diana's height was such a key component of her overall look and physicality, Duran tailored Christian's wardrobe to give the illusion of height with high waistlines that often slope down at the sides and back, as in this beautiful gown here. She also beautifully communicates some of Diana's other iconic fashion moments. And I use that word communicates very deliberately for a costume designer's job is to do just that, to communicate a character, an era, a mood. A costume designer is part of a movie's narrative team. They are storytellers, not replicators. Anyone who can sew well can do that, surely, and I'm not saying it's easy, but it's not the same job as being a costume designer. And so I'm giving Jacqueline Duran's costumes for Spencer an absolute 10 on 10. Before I move on to my capsule review of the movie, I have an awful feeling that over the next few days we're going to see a lot of this. Who was the best Diana? Over the past 15 years or so, a lot of talented actors have taken on the role of the ill-fated princess. And it's so like the internet to start ranking and rating. And as I've said before, and I'll say it again, I don't like it when women are rated and ranked against each other. In fact, I don't like it when anything is rated and ranked worst to best, best to worst. It's clickbait and it's lazy and it's mean-spirited. So can we not do this? Is it not enough to celebrate who and what we like without slagging off who we don't like and what we don't like? Anyway, onto my capsule review of the movie itself. And the first thing to note is that it's not what you think it's going to be. At least it wasn't what I thought it was going to be because it's being marketed as a mainstream biopic. But Spencer is 100% an art house movie. It opens with the words, a fable based on a true tragedy. And the story is told entirely through Diana's own perceptions. Some real some imagined. It is sumptuous to look at, with beautiful locations, breathtaking cinematography, jaw-dropping interiors, and a very particular lighting that gives it a dreamlike quality. And although moments such as this from the movie's trailer suggest that it might be a bit like The Crown, it is absolutely nothing like The Crown. In fact, the Queen only has one short piece of dialogue. Charles has just a little more, but no other adult royal has any dialogue at all. In Spencer, there is no doubt who the villains in this fairy tale gone wrong actually are. These dimly lit, silent, and ultimately menacing family are more like a malevolent entity rather than flesh and blood people. And it is incredibly effective in terms of the growing menace of the movie's claustrophobic atmosphere. As we were driving home, I said to my husband that weirdly Spencer reminded me of both Roman Polanski's repulsion and Stanley Kubrick's Barry Lyndon, and amazingly, given that neither of these movies are exactly mainstream, he said he'd recalled both of these movies too. Both Repulsion and Barry Lyndon fall into the realm of art house, and that includes being somewhat on the slow side, which Spencer undoubtedly is. And in the case of all three movies, it's not so much a case of entertainment per se, but a study of the art of film. In the parallels with Repulsion, the narrative is formed through the psychological lens of a woman unravelling, and the beautiful cinematography, sumptuous setting, and molasses-like pacing definitely evoke the underlying condemnation of the privileged classes in Barry Lyndon. So, should you see it or flee it? Well, if you know what you're getting yourself into, that this is not a juicy biopic, but a slow moving, beautifully shot study, I definitely say see it, if only to experience the performance of Kristen Stewart, who, in short, is remarkable. Hers was honestly one of the best screen performances I have seen in years and years so nuanced, so interesting, so brilliant. And more than doing an imitation of Diana, she has created a character of a Diana we all know, 
but perhaps a Diana we might meet in a dream or in a nightmare. If she's not Oscar nominated for this performance, I'll eat my hat. I'll even eat this one. Thanks for watching. I'll be back with more very soon on The Ultimate Fashion History. And until then, thanks for watching. Bye for now.